गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एम आई ऑडिबल टेक्निकल एजिलिटी सो बिफोर वी बिगिन विद सेशन देर आर टू अनाउंसमेंट फर्स्ट फीडबैक लिंक वुड बी शेयर पोस्ट सेशन ऑन द चैट विंडो and i request you to fill up the feedback form because it helps us to understand your no expectations and post that the pdu code would be displayed and you can avail one pdu in technical category so coming back to <clears throat> our session so our session uh, guest speaker for today is mr rohit thanda rohit is an established industry leader and digital products consultant for global clients with focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning search experience content management and product content life cycle api strategy and computer vision and conversational commerce he carries a proven history of 21 years of work experience defining strategic directions taking new products to market creating innovative solutions and growing new business using enterprise digital technologies he is a well recognized as a next generation visionary thought leader in cooperate who's who digital magazine for his contributions to provide technology consulting and guidance to indian startups and msme ninex certified as a cloud practitioner and microsoft trainer holding global industry level project management certifications like pmp to gaf and itl version 3 rohit is passionate about teaching and providing awareness on ai to business and wider community he is currently mentoring 80 plus artificial intelligence and ml learners for esteemed academic institutions like triple iit delhi iit madras lake great lakes and university of texas he is also ai thought leader and renowned speaker and blogger in multiple forums so please join me in welcoming rohit and rohit thank you for accepting our invite and we look forward for our session absolutely thank you very much uh, rupali this is uh, quite a bit of introduction uh, let me share my screen guys uh, and as rupali mentioned my name is rohit khanna i'm working currently as director of digital platforms and products with the hcl technologies and uh, i hope uh, rupali my screen is visible to everyone Yes, it is visible. Okay, let me put on the video as well so that people can map the face with the name. Okay, um, so guys, uh, today we are going to talk about um, uh, talk about a very interesting topic. I'm sure you guys, uh, uh, you guys have already um, have been working or are uh, are embarking the journey to work upon the project management side of the things, and um, you would have uh, uh, or you are professionally working on that part. now today we are going to talk about agile project management and uh, i'm sure i it doesn't need any kind of an introduction that what exactly is the agile methodology of working but more so we are going to talk about how the human aspect of um, of uh, of an agile project management can be combined with the expertise that we get from an artificial intelligence or machine learning system in order to enhance the technical agility what i plan to cover is we all are aware of the day to day pm practices that we follow right we know that we uh, we go through a complete sprint cycle we plan about uh, you know uh, we plan what exactly has to be the backlog the product backlog that we often see in the agile world that has to be created we also estimate that we uh, we create a product vision create sprint goals estimate and then we run the sprint cycle and while we are running the sprint cycle we often for uh, you know work through uh, refining the sprint cycle or adding a new task or breaking down it into new task so there is a whole lot of steps that we always take now with the rise of artificial intelligence um it has potentially been seen in past uh, couple of years or more than that for possibly that the there that artificial intelligence has got a potential to you know significantly transform the practice of project management now project management we all know right it has got lot of uncertainties and specifically you can um, you can put it on the socio technical aspect why because there is a human aspect that is involved in a project management right now uh, because of this human aspect the problem is there is lot of variability 
right there is a lot of uncertainty and kind of a lot of things are run by intuition or experience based and there is a there is a, obviously there is a change in the customer need that we that we go through in day to day life so what i'm going to talk about is that these things are said and done we know that happen while we are executing a project right how do we enable ourselves while we are ex executing a project in order to make our decisions we leverage ai based techniques in pm practices and we'll see how it happens and where it can happen and where we can leverage and what we can leverage basically what kind of algorithms or what kind of machine learning programs are available to our uh, to facilitate us in order to expedite the decision making or um, or or reduce the entire cycle time that we often spend in order to execute the project life cycle so we'll we'll start with that we'll talk about what what uh, what has to be changed and why has to be basically why you need to change right we'll talk about a bit about it and then how exactly which is often a question in back of your mind i mean all uh, said and done and to, uh, talked about it is all theoretical but how should i embark this journey let me answer that question wherein your project management will be ai enabled i'll take a use case as well what i've done is i have uh, picked up around uh, 16 open source projects which are publicly available okay from different um, vendors like altisian or um, assembla i have just picked up all those uh, 16 open source projects and these projects are nothing but a dump of all the product backlogs and obviously we all know product backlog can be a bug fix it can be a change request it can be a technical debt all that has been consolidated one place with their story points and now these 16 projects are past projects that have happened in um, happened like few years back okay i pulled up all those projects and they have got around 23k issues which are listed or i can say items in the product backlog now using that and using a nlp algorithm which i will uh, quickly take you through as well i'll walk you through how exactly we can estimate any kind of a project requirement which might arise in future and have the same nature of the job that my previous but that my previous project has gone through so we'll take that use case and we'll see how the results of from an algorithm can be driven using the natural language processing which i'll take you through so these are some of these are the things that i plan to cover in next uh, 50 minutes let's say or 52 minutes precisely and you can you are free to uh, stop me in between and put on your questions just let me know if there are any questions rupali because i can't see the i can't see the chat window as of now but if there are sufficient questions i can take a pause and answer questions from uh, from folks out here okay let's dive into it but before we dive into this guys uh, just think over a bit um, when whenever i am talking about uh, you know um, artificial intelligence or any machine learning program often i would hear from people that uh, uh, that it is isn't it very synonymous synonymous probably to automation what we are doing day in day out and trust me the answer is no uh, the big answer is no it is often misunderstood the reason why i am so uh, confident about saying uh, is obviously the factual information that we have on place but more than that the experience that i bring in because i have worked in both both parts of the world if in my experience if i count like 10 years uh, uh, past from now i would say i i have also worked in the tools which are which were largely business process automation driven let's say we talk about automation anywhere and we talk about tools which are uh, which which automate the workflow but what does it do it is actually uh, uh, it actually presupposes like mentioned on this slide as well it presupposes certain task or certain steps that the machine has to take in order to execute a particular task so all those steps are predetermined and they are already at avail and fed into a rules engine and that rules engine will actually automatically work as per the defined workflow so what i am trying to do in automation i am trying to um, i am trying to get rid of the workload that is there with me because of the manual task that i have to perform i am freeing myself from doing the manual task however when we went into the uh, world of uh, artificial intelligence which is largely to do with deep learning of machines which will learn over and over and over again in order to not only work as per the as per the previous execution or the previous data that has been fed in but it will also work on the large amount of data to make a probable decision so there can be multiple decisions when i am for example anticipating the risk in a project in an upcoming project if i am trying to anticipate a risk there can be there can be multiple routes that i have to take in order to mitigate artificial intelligence programs are actually working in order to give me the probable routes that i can take with a given confidence level 
so it's not only taking my work off my shoulders which is one thing because it is giving me the alternate solutions but it is also making a decision of appropriateness which path is appropriate for me to take with a given confidence level that is one part of it which is very different from automation now now the other part of it nowadays with the uh, with all these iot devices sensor information that we are collecting and obviously 5g 5g and above kind of a network bandwidth where we will getting you you would be seeing that different sources of the data are collecting tremendous amount of structured and unstructured data isn't it we have got um, uh, we have got uh, a lot of heterogeneous data around us it can be text data it can be image data it can be numeric data that is appearing to me now all that kind of heterogeneous data is humongous and high in volume how do i address the problem of managing such a big data right so that 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 is yet another problem which i have to deal with all the enterprises wherever you guys are working or where i am working we would we would have gone through a cycle of number of projects over the years are we really using that kind of data which is available from the previous project executions or not are we really taking lessons out of it are we really considering the impediments or the actions that i have kept in past projects and whenever there is an upcoming project which is uh, of similar nature or am i am i actually cross leveraging that past information and experience in order to anticipate the risk or estimate the estimate the story points that i have to um, that i have to do for any upcoming product backlog so these are the questions which which often come to which often come as a wish list as well for any product owner if i have a tool which can help me do that then how easy it would be how convenient it would be to for me to make predictive decisions rather than making any proactive decisions right today we are making proactive decisions or we are making reactive decisions what if i am able to do predictive decision making so if i am enabled by machines to do that and that is where we actually collect or we 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 put this subject together how we introduce artificial intelligence technique in agile project management now all this is good yeah and all this is uh, all this is something which is uh, um, uh, which is available in the market the reality of the project is um, which when i am talking to number of my clients the reality of the project is that we are dealing with lot of volatility isn't it we are seeing every day the uh, the situation with the business stakeholders changes their wish list changes and and then we have got a, a variability and uncertainty because we have got a skill set which we do not we are not sure about it is it is with us today but it may iterate today uh, tomorrow we may not get the same skill set of the same set of the people that are available for my present project to be available for my next project which might be of the similar nature isn't it and then there is a lot of complexity i would say this is largely kind of a vuca you know um, uh, vuca terminology that you have often seen except for the a part of it i have put the variability of the human aspects here the complexity is largely because of the amount of the data that i have with me that i have to address in any project execution cycle how i am making sure that data is leveraged appropriately right these are the uncertainty as a project manager i have to deal day in day out but does does my business stakeholder understand it no the answer is that they still want us to grow their enterprise with the velocity right with a higher velocity every time grow my projects or or execute my projects with a even higher velocity from my uh, as compared to the previous project what is that avail to me technology is one solution that is obviously avail to me we all know that right but adoption adoption which is the second point and the rate at which i am changing the adoption of this tools today i was at one point of time i was executing the agile projects without any tools and using lot of intuition and experience then came a time where which was called as bringing in the technical agility in my projects which was largely to do with you know bringing in good practices like tdd bdd um, or bringing in ci cd like pipelines or automated environment provisioning those were the uh, those were the new technologies or i would say um, uh, a movement towards uh, creating a technical agility uh, in my work environment right now even after getting technical agility this is the the subject that we are today talking about it is beyond that it is beyond the technical agility why because technical agility was still a proactive and a reactive situation which i was dealing with today what i am dealing with is a predictive predictive analysis that i have to do and hence we have to think beyond it in the absence of that in the absence of uh, i mean even if you go with the market statistics in the i'm sorry is there a question 
Okay, that's fine. Okay, I heard some noise. Okay, so um, in the absence of uh, technical uh, agility or even uh, right amount of tools, what we have seen in the market nowadays, um, um, and obviously these are statistics, some of the statistics which are from United States, not necessarily global or from India's so Indian situation. But if what we are seeing is that seventy-five of the, uh, percent of the projects, you know, or seventy-five um, percent of the IT executives or the business stakeholders see that their projects are failing because they do not have the appropriate amount of tools the appropriate integration of the tools with their operating environment that is one problem second is they do have communication between the teams but they there is large obstacle in terms of reusing that communication or putting the use of that collaboration or comments from the people or the best practices in actual use because of which 59% feel that they the communication becomes an obstacle for them and last is that uh, uh, they are not uh, there is a lack of decision making when i have to add on or refine my product backlog let's say i have to break down an epic into a um, i have to break down an epic into a, uh, a into a user story and a user story into my task right at that point at every point i have to make a decision right that kind of decision or a, that kind of a wrong decision which is based on an intuition or experience might lead to a premature closure of my projects which is because of which like 38% of the projects in us have not even hit their deadlines right so those are the those are the issues which is backing up the um, uh, the fact that we need uh, that the need of the r is predictive analytics that is done on top of the projects that can actually give me actionable insights to drive my upcoming projects so the problem to solve here is um, if you see that these three columns on the slide the problem in hand is we have a humongous amount of the code we have a humongous amount of the best practices in place we have test automation which is still unproductive and th there is there can be problems or related to continuous delivery pipeline as well we do have enablers i talked about it you have collaborative exploration you have code quality checks you have automated environment provisioning all these are like uh, technical tools at your rescue but every time what a product owner is wishing is is there a way that i can automate all my repeated tasks is there a way that i can um, uh, you know um, i can i can uh, anticipate the uh, risk in uh, that is going to happen in future for my given project right or is there a way that i can keep a track on real time of my sprint progress right is there a way that i can simply pull out the code comments or the code best practices and i can predict whether the uh, whether the code which is written during my unit testing i can predict the code written is compliant to those practices or not and is going to result into certain kind of errors or bugs or not so is there a way i can do that more so i today i do have burn down charts or velocity charts that i create as a part of my reporting is there a way which 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 obviously tell me that uh, uh, that what has happened right but is there a way uh, i can predict why the velocity of my current project has fallen down as compared to my previous projects i know reporting can tell me the what part of it what has gone wrong but why it has gone wrong that kind of diagnostic planning or diagnostic analytics can it be provided to me so what, just think over it if a product owner or a, or, a, or a, even a scrum master for that matter if if he is given that kind of an ability how easy or how predictive predictive uh, predictive would be any kind of decision making for for the successful execution of project now in this complete agile project management let's cover the three parts of it what has to be changed all the uh, in this diagram and obviously this diagram is publicly available on analytics india map uh, mag you can find in any agile project management and you guys would be um, obviously be able to easily relate to this whenever you have a whenever you have a um, uh, you know a product backlog given to you and we all understand again the product backlog would be largely uh, you know uh, uh, the kind of the uh, bugs that you have or the change requests that you are getting or kind of a technical depths or any kind of the any kind of the um, uh, uh, you know user stories which were not uh, which were not prioritized in the previous sprint so you just enable that so you put them in the product backlog now when you create a product backlog you have to do a kind of identification isn't it you identify the backlog items now identification of the backlog items can uh, uh, can be uh, can be based on number of factors where uh, type of the uh, type of the you know and then interdependencies 
of certain requirements with each other and then it may depend upon the skill set that you have in hand today or it may depend on the it may depend on the resultant product that you are develop, trying to develop. Obviously, the product has to be incrementally developed, right? The kind of the features that would require prioritization because of the interdependency. So there can be a number of factors that are there. Now, all, when we talk about all these factors, these factors are in the heterogeneous form. They can be structured. They can be unstructured. That is first thing. And we are dealing with such a humongous data. And we obviously we often we do have certain kind of tools uh, available today. But think about it. The challenge becomes when the product items are more than 100 or more than 200, like it goes into hundreds. Then how do you make a decision based on just intuition and experience that become one big problem? Now, not only that. After that, you will have to estimate them, right? You have to give a story point estimation. Now, the story point est estimation is again based on certain agile tools that we are using today. This is not based on the previous insights, actionable insights that I have from the similar kind of projects that I have that I have executed. After that, when I'm executing, I'm also refining my backlog items. Now, when I'm refining, there are three levels of refinement that I will do. I will decompose and epic in epic into a into the number of user story. I will split the user story into small stories. Then I will break a user story into a number of specific project tasks, isn't it? Now, often we have seen the team would struggle to refine the backlog items. They will rely on their own, again, intuition or experience. And that is that is one of the biggest problems that they have been facing. So simi uh, similarly, when you have to monitor the progress, the current practices in risk management mostly you know, rely on the high level guidance and subjective judgments. What we have to do is we have to predict the future risk. Uh, I mean, predicting the future risk or which is challenging because of uh, inherent uncertainty, I would say, or, or dependencies. And um, uh, there is currently, I would say, a gap, which is in pro um, gap in providing the agile teams with the insightful or actionable information about the uh, set of risk in given sprint. That is a big gap. They are not able to anticipate what kind of risk will be there. Similarly, when you are doing a task breakout, yet again, there is a level of intuition yet that you are putting in. So these are the areas, the ones which are marked in red, which are largely the pro potential areas where we can put in yeah, artificial intelligence. Why should I do it? The next question is, why should I do it? The an answer is, see, when you're talking about, um, uh, when you're talking about uh, the product backlog, Okay, or the user stories, what exactly it is. It is the textual information. Now, when you are, uh, 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 which is, uh, and which is structured, why? Be because it is provided to me in Jira, and I can uh, often download from the tools like Jira or Assembla. I can simply download it, and it is present in a tabular format to me with a proper structure, which is like a user story number, then you have a user story description, then you have a story point estimation, and you have a number of other fields that you plan for. So that is actually a structured data which is available to me. Now think about the metadata which is available in my code, which is like the code comments or the best practices which I integrate into my code uh, coding. Or think about any kind of collaboration or the sprint um, uh, or the uh, daily stand-up meetings where teams are collaborating with each other and they are putting in comments or they are putting in the impediments or actions. What are they? All the code coding practices or all the all the kind of the comments that are put in the code. These are all unstructured data, isn't it? This is this is not structured in any way. This is not a tabular data that is available with a strict size and shape to me. They can go into um, again, into a, a big paragraph or a single line, isn't it? So we, what, what I mean to uh, provide you uh, insight is there is a large amount of heterogeneous data that we are talking about in the product backlog. And each of this has got interdependencies. Luckily, with artificial intelligence and machine learning programs, they, we, have, we have GPU systems or we have um, high-end computational systems that, which is provided obviously by Microsoft and Google and Azure, all those cloud partners that we have or, uh, or even Amazon, we, we do have the GCPs for high computational that can high computational power that can deal with such kind of large heterogeneous data. So that is one area which, which is a struggle in any kind of a project management to deal with such kind of different or variant data. Second, I already took up, which is intuition and experience based, which is all sprint planning, task breakout, which is which is dependent largely on your intuition. 
third is we are not able to learn from the experience of the past project there is no uh, availability of reporting and tracking in an in uh, which provides me insights and actions or recommendations to run the given project all i am given is that why something has happened what has happened or what has gone wrong is still not provided and what steps i should take in order to mitigate a similar kind of a risk that are not recommended by any kind of a project management tool to me so th these are the reasons why i need to do that now often uh, when we reach this and again this is uh, this is a publicly available this is not a tool guys don't take this the, the right side of this slide is basically a framework that we are talking about again i have put, picked it up from my analytics india mag which is i'm the member of analytics india mag so i have i have access to the framework latest research and the frameworks that we have in the uh, in the natural language processing world so this is a this is one framework that can be applied to any kind of tool and obviously there are tools in the market which are working on based on this framework right but this this is one framework which actually helps to run or or overcome all the troubles and the problems or challenges that we have pre previously talked about now uh, dealing with massive amounts of data giving the insight uh, actionable insights or estimating the uh, story point efforts or giving recommendation on the task refinement or even giving recommendation of the kind of the skill set or the resources i should be bringing in order to run the upcoming sprint so that kind of recommendation is something that this particular framework aims at but don't get overwhelmed by this framework i will break it down for you in next uh, 10 minutes and it will become very easy to understand just uh, just just start looking it from the top you would all understand because you all are uh, executing uh, projects or uh, are dealing with project management in some shape or form think about the different sources in any kind of project management i have i've got a project uh, product vision right i've got a sprint goal that is one source of information i've got the backlog items with me i've got a set of people that are working for me which is an agile team i've got a code base obviously in and how long a particular sprint has taken given a nature of a project right this is the base information that is given on the top of this framework that i always have in hand the heart of this framework is the in the middle which is representation learning engine now let's understand i will just go to and fro between the next few slides but i'll take you back to this framework the first and the major, uh, major major component of this framework is the representation learning engine now think about it representation is the word and learning engine is another word let's break it down right now representation is uh, machines do not understand textual information for example i give a requirement that uh, that a particular app has to be compatible with uh, let's say uh, xyz app that i'm creating has to be compatible with ios and android right that is one requirement that uh, that is given to me now if i feed that to the machine with a given story point and it let's assume it takes five story points to make it compatible to ios and android now if i give that kind of information back to my machine machine does not understand but our machine only work on binary information we all know that right so this information has to be converted into some numeric format in ones and zeros right and this kind of representation in the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning is called as the vector representation converting all the word format or the textual format into numeric or into a so called vector we call it a vector representation hence the name representation now next let me go to the next slide and explain there are the three kinds of vector representation three kind of areas where i would have to convert my given textual information into vectors we all know that the sources given to me are sprint goals description communication uh, among my team code comments comments in the backlog items these are all the sources even the capability of my agile team their skill set given in the project artifacts that also is a source for me it is a data for me isn't it now there are three components let's start with the first component which is a natural language processing component you got the project textual artifacts guys right you got the structured data which is the backlog items i spoke about it you have got a set of issues which obviously in the part of my demo in last 15 minutes i'll show up to you but um, you got that kind of a textual information converting the textual information using the uh, in the natural language uh, in the natural language processing we call it as embeddings we convert 
all this textual information into numeric vectors, right? Which can be a word to vector, converting a single word, which we call as a word to vec. Similarly, a paragraph can be converted into a vector, which is a numerical representation. Now, there are a number of, luckily, we have Googles and Facebooks of this word and then in this word, and they have actually come up with number of algorithms and use them as well. So one of the uh, two algorithms that we use here is LSTM. I'll obviously not get technical about it, but they are long short term memory algorithms, which uh, when you often go to Google Translate, you would have seen that you put a textual information and that gets converted into a language, right? Into a language of your choice that you want to convert into. So the at the back of it, there is an AI algorithm or a neural network that is working in. So that neural network or an AI algorithm is called as a long short term memory. Okay, it converts it into the given information. Similarly, in this case, we have got deep learning based NLP algorithms that are being written and some of them have been used and tested by Google and Facebook already. They would convert the textual information. What they will do is they will collect all the common words. For example, iOS and Android in the given requirement, which I just explained to you. Similarly, if tomorrow I've got another representation where there is a, uh, where, where I see there is a bug which is related to iOS, then iOS become a common word. So what it does is with given, given the requirements or given the previous project data or the backlog, it often creates a pattern of common words that has happened and for which a particular estimation was given. Based on that pattern matching, it would actually store, and that is why it is called as a short term memory. It stores all that pattern and the associated story point estimation with it. And that kind of pattern is being used whenever I am giving a new requirement. In any new requirement, it will go back to the pattern, figure out the closest match, and with the given match, predict that what kind of story point estimation can be given for first part of it. The second part of it is to deal with the code. We have given the code. I was talking about the code base. We have given the coding practices, the metadata, code comments, which is given to me. What if I can pull that unstructured data out, convert that again into vector, and I can follow the semantic and syntactic structure that I've used in past so that those best practices can be reflected or recommended in my any upcoming projects of similar nature. Again, there are LSTM or long short term memory algorithms in NLP word that we have written that have been written and researched thoroughly that can be easily used. These are the pre built algorithm guys. You don't have to rewrite them. I will show you in the example in a few minutes, but these are the pre written or pre built algorithms. All that you have to do is you have to bring that in action and put in the appropriate amount of the data that is uh, that has to be provided and tune them to your use. Obviously, that is the second part related to the coding. The third part which is most important is related to your communication among the team members. You have daily sync up meetings, you have other sprint meetings, you have certain impediments to work on, you have certain code comments, okay? You have comments on the backlog items or certain collaboration comments within the team. Now, based on those, is it possible I convert this unstructured data again into vector and in the upcoming features, I enrich all the social dependencies that were used in the past between the team members, the kind of the collaboration that was used in past and that resulted into the success of the project. Can I extract that and represent in my upcoming features that I'm planning for the next sprint? Or can I also extract the skill set that was uh, that was actually used in my previous similar project and I can replicate the same combination of the skill set in my upcoming projects if they are of the same nature. If I can do that, then how easy it will be for me to anticipate any kind of the resource risk or any kind of the coding risk, any kind of the collaboration risk. That is one point. The second point is how easy is it for me to create the resource pool? How easy it may, will it be for me to create the form the sprint team or my squad? Isn't it? So the what kind of roles should be involved in the squad? What kind of skill set should be there? All that can be pre-estimated or recommended by such systems. Again, there are the deep learning, uh, deep learning based NLP techniques which are being used in order to execute such things. That is the first part of it, which we just discussed, which is this heart of the complete framework. The second part of it is analytics engine. Okay, which is largely to do with the reporting and tracking. Think about it. I was talking a few minutes back as well that your team's velocity dropped significantly. Now, 
why it has uh, why it has dropped obviously you we all can get the answer even today using um, um uh, using all the all the kind of burn down charts or velocity chart or any kind of sprint reports which would actually summarize uh, what happened using the uh, you know uh, they are created by summarizing what happened using the historical project data right knowing what has happened is very useful obviously like i just said but why something has happened why the team velocity has dropped will be even more useful now ai equipped with machine learning can augment such descriptive analytics why but it will discover um, uh, by uh, obviously it will discover the patterns identify the anomalies that has happened or any kind of unusual events that would have happened that is the first part of it now the second part of it is the predictive analytic reporting we we all know that we are dealing with a large amount of the data which we which i just discussed right now two challenging areas which are always there when it comes to prediction is effort estimation and risk uh, prediction uh, um, what if i have got certain techniques which can estimate the size of user story through learning the team's previous estimates and i will show you this with an example right like i just said that is one area that will actually help us making my decisions very easily now we do have existing uh, estimation process you might be thinking about planning poker or any kind of other automated tool but isn't better if i can use large amount of the data that is available to me 5 years down the line and use that experience in order to build my predictive model which can actually not only take care of the past experience but also infer the current health state of the project why because while i go back and look into my previous data the effort estimations and the deviations that has happened i can figure out those as well and based on that i can predict the risk that might be uh, uh, might go unanticipated or that might lead to a project overall delay or a sprint delivery risk you know so such kind of risk i also get a direction um i mean i will also get the direction to such kind of risk now the third part is the most advanced and still um, a lot of research is being done which is called as the prescriptive analytics now using the results from descriptive and predictive the first two the prescriptive analytics would recommend the best course of action for agile teams in a specific situation let's talk about the backlog item identification it will automatically process and extract new backlog item from different sources and they will tell that whether they should be prioritized or not right it will automatically work out the interdependencies of a new item with the existing ones when it comes to backlog item refinement think about uh, you know uh, how was user story split into smaller user story and then to the task what if there are the learning decomposition which happens at the background which are give me recommendations that how i should split a user story or an epic into user story right similarly the third part is if i get enough recommendation that can provide me what are the future opportunities or risk uh, or what is the kind of the recommended mitigation plan for any risk that is upcoming so uh, so those kind of uh, those kind of pre uh, prescriptive analytics would also be helpful for me now we talked about these two the third part is planning and optimization let's think uh, let's think about it now when it comes to planning uh just think over it uh, i mean most of the times when i talk about such um such kind of prediction often people come back and tell me that what if my project operating environment is different then um the nature of the project is same but the operating environment which is like infrastructure or parameters uh, or different parameters like the resources available or uh, the skill set of the resources or expertise of the resources now these are the uh, soft factors which are still there which comes under the project operating environment right what what if i say that these projects or these algorithms are not only dealing with data but they are getting reinforcement their learning is becoming reinforcement with these parameters as well while they are making a prediction while we are doing a planning and that is exactly what planning engine is all about planning engine is going to store all the operating environment parameters that will reinforce the learning of any algorithm and will actually make a relation between the recommended sprint plan and the operating environment so what i mean is when it gives the recommendation it will give the recommendation with a disclaimer that it can work with a given operating environment parameters right so that kind of relationship building is definitely adversarial as well so that has to be done 
lastly um, it comes to the optimization now when it comes to optimization given a particular um, uh, you know set of uh, uh, sprint plans and there is always a there is always a factor of accuracy of a model you might have heard in artificial intelligence there is a factor of uh, le continuous learning that has to be there now there, the optimization engine is something that will work on the hyper parameter tuning i've constructed a model i've written an algorithm that is estimating the story points for me but there is an anomaly in it there are there are certain hyper parameters that i have to keep tuning in order to enrich my the way my model is working so that kind of optimization is being brought up by the optimization engine that is given as a part of this framework the last one is the conversational dialogue that you see on the right of this slide right this is this conversational um, uh, dialogue is uh, is envisioned as uh, primarily to converse with the agile team for example my product owner or my scrum master has to converse they have to check that can you for example they have to put a question that show me your estimate of this user story or can you help me split a given user story so it it's a kind of a chatbot which is being asked different question it will take that question and it will feed that in back into this framework in order to get the responses which the framework is basically working on the nlp deep learning nlp technique algorithms which is actually giving the response back to the chatbot and chatbot is kind of a front end to the end users who are getting the responses so this is the framework of any kind of a ai based tool for agile project management that is actually helping me do backlog item identification risk mitigation plan backlog item refinement prediction of the risk or item uh, estimations as well so this is entirely uh, what i wanted to talk about i'll take a quick one minute pause in case you guys have any questions here you can put in in the q and a window or i'm not sure if you can speak but uh, i'm just checking the chat window now there are none uh, but in case you have any questions guys let me know now or we can take up in the last 10 minutes as well okay i guess no so what i'll do is i'll continue with the demo before i land up doing this demo let me tell you the environment um, the kind of uh, data that i have picked up like i was saying in the beginning of this call uh, we have got 16 open source projects right uh, I, what i did was i picked up 16 open source projects obviously from different vendors like moodle jira clover bamboo these are the different projects that you see here right so these are the different projects and then they had uh, they had their dumps uh, for example i had a jira uh, jira dump that was given to me that had got uh, 352 issues in it. Now these issues are either the either the backlog items, they are bugs, or they are change requests, or they are technical depth issues. Any of them, which I which doesn't matter to me. Okay, I I got a total of 23k issues here. What I'm trying to do here is with this comprehensive data set, I do initial data analysis, which is always the first step, or the or we often called uh, often called as the uh, data cleanup or the hygiene data hygiene. We clean up the data which is provided to us and uh, and then we actually do the feature engineering we convert this data which is provided to me i'll show you in a minute what kind of data i have collected so all the data which is largely the list of the requirements i would say or the list of issues along with their estimated story points that were used in the previous projects which is the previous 16 projects that was collected and that was put in a shape and form that was uh, cleaned up and the feature engineering was being done, which I'll show you in my code base as well. Uh, I'll walk you through. And then that data was feed, fed into, um, uh, into a machine learning program. Okay, into a, and I would say a deep learning NLP AI algorithm, which actually created a bag of words. What exactly is a bag of words? It is a, uh, the common words that I have picked up from the various requirements that I catered in this last 16 projects. That complete bag, is being used for any kind of upcoming requirements that I would feed in as a test data in order to check and predict what is the story point based estimation for that new requirement based on the similar pattern that I have uh, faced or I have seen in my previous given requirement. Now, let me stop here for a bit, stop my presentation and take you into the Excel sheet, which actually lists down all the uh, project issues so that you get a view of what I'm talking about. Give me a minute. I will share my screen back. Rohit, there is a question in the chat. Okay. 
Yeah, it's uh, Sahil is asking, are such tools available in the market? I believe the initial slide that you have shown me. Yes, yes. And I will I, actually I will conclude with this as well. The number of the there are a number of tools. I would say um, it depends on your requirement, Sahil. It's a very good question, by the way. It depends on your requirement. If you are looking for a project story point estimation kind of a tool, obviously it is available. If you are looking for an end-to-end -end, uh, agile project management tool, there are still researches going on in that. There are tools um, uh, you might be using for project management like Trello, or uh, or there are uh, there are number of uh, there are number of other tools like uh, Basecamp, Project Insight or uh, asana that are available but they they are not end to end project management tool let me put they are ai based tool and they are using such frameworks and algorithms uh, that i just touched upon but they are not end to end tools so it just depends for example i want to make an estimation right a story point estimation then these are available i want to make a risk prediction then there is another tool one tool that catered to the end-to-end -end agile project management is still under research and still not available. So what the enterprises are now doing are for project agile project management, you are using multiple tools and consolidating them together. These are small open source tools, not very expensive. I'll be honest with you, but most of the uh, enterprises are actually consolidating more than one tool in order to do, do that. Okay, um, guys, are you able to uh, see the Excel sheet, Rupali, if you can confirm? Yeah, yes, but the font size is very small. Okay, no worries. I will enlarge it. So what is it? It is an Excel sheet that is listing down all the requirements. This is a requirement Excel sheet. Okay, it has got all the requirements written to it and it's a dump of 23K issues that I have that I was talking about from all the 16 projects. So these are all the issues that has been provided to me. I create a dump of all these issues, which is a data given to me, which I will obviously clean up as a part of my program. And then I would actually, um, I would create another Excel sheet, another set of data, which is this, uh, let me show up the screen again, which is all the associated story points. See, and this is called the second part of the AI uh, uh, artificial intelligence data that is being fed into the model. So what I'm trying to do here is there is an estimated story point that is given for each requirement. And there is a dump of all the requirements given to me. Okay. What we will do basically is we will actually, let me share my screen third time. What I've done is I've gone back and I have actually, if you can see the screen, I have written an agile effort estimation uh, algorithm. Okay, myself, obviously, I'm not going to get into the technical details. This has been written in Python as a language, but I did this as a part of this demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the requirement document that is there, which is possibly the data collection part of it. The, uh, I created this diagram so that it becomes easy for you guys to understand. We, we actually collect all such data. These algorithms would collect all this data and they will break this into training and test corpus. We create two kinds of data. We use the training data in order to feed it into the algorithm in order to make our machine learn over and over again. You don't have to make your machine learn only once. You have to do it multiple iterations in order to make your machine learn, right? And then you will actually convert this into a vector. Remember, I was telling you a representation thing, all the textual information is converted into vector. This trained mo uh, model is being sent across into the, uh, into the, this textual information is sent across into a model. It is an analog based software effort estimation model, which I've used. It is based on a NLP technique, which is called as BERT, B-E-R-T. Uh, basically, uh, basically the, obviously you don't have to get into detail of it. The full form is bi-directional encoder representation. This is an, a pre-built algorithm, which has been researched by uh, Google researchers and they have already come up with this algorithm. All that we do is we pull up this data, we reform this data, do the data engineering part of it. Okay. And then basically we would actually feed that data into a BERT model that is, uh, that is already provided to me, right? I do not have to create the model from scratch. There are pre-built models available in the market when I'm writing an algorithm. I can simply import that model feed in my data, 
they will create the bag of words i'm making it easy in the layman language for you guys they will create a bag of words which is nothing but the pattern that was followed in the requirement list remember the requirement list that was given to me that large excel sheet i will pull up all the requirements one by one create the common bag of words that were there and put it there and associate each each combination of the word with the given estimated story point that was in the other excel sheet that i provided i feed that into my model and make my model learn over and over again i reiterate this a number of times almost a million times i would run this model it would automatically run a million time and make my machine learn that for a given set of words what was the kind of the estimation that was being predicted that was being used last time once that is done i would then feed in my test data which i have kept remember i have split my data into train and test i feed in the train data now i feed the test data into it when i am feeding the test data at this point i would see what exactly it is predicting look at the table here let me zoom this for you guys if you look at this table guys you would have seen that this requirement was in the excel sheet remember this is the actual story point that was in the second excel sheet that i showed up and this is the predicted story points obviously they are they are here and there because i have not tuned the model but uh, but it is not a very bad accuracy i got an accuracy of 78% right with certain errors uh, but but then if you see most of the times it is predicting correctly or nearly correct right so this kind of algorithm what it has done is whenever i am feeding a new requirement it is actually giving me that similar pattern was followed in the past for the given requirement what was the story point that was there and my machine is predicting the story point itself it is not relying on any kind of human aspect now it is just predicting on the basis of the what i have used in past okay so that is basically the algorithm that we often get into and uh, this was just written uh, from the uh, for the purpose of this particular demo and it was quickly written obviously but uh, uh, this is this is how these are being uh, uh, these are being used let me go back to the screen again and provide you so this is something that we already talked about and this we already see, saw over the notebook as well over the code piece that has showed up so given the it's a it's a quick glimpse of how the predictions are made by the machine as as compared to the actual predictions actual story points that were there uh, using the human aspect right so such kind of different models are being researched and created i have shown you one example but for each project there are different techniques again you can use different products are using different techniques giving different accuracies as well so the best accuracy obviously is like 71% that we are talking about here for a project called db it is annotated project but we are using that as one of the projects now uh, basically the uh, what are the next steps for me the next steps for me is i would say i was talking uh, sahil asked a question see these are the tools that are available in the market that uh, that i wanted to touch upon but project insight is one of the tools and most of the teams we are using in our um, and trello also as well we are using you might be using one or more of these tools but all these tools like i say uh, they are for different purposes they are ai based tools they definitely use the nlp based technique at the background but then they some of them are used uh, for one kind of requirement and some of them are used for the other kind of predictions right now how do i start this journey you all have projects around you right you have got um, the first thing that you should be doing is you pick up a subset of the projects that are available to you in a open source environment not in the production environment right you pick up a small existing data set introduce such kind of ai based tools which are which may be already there in your project management portfolio or which your enterprise is looking forward to there are open source versions as well available for these tools to do a test run that also you can do obviously you have to collaborate with the industry experts in order to evaluate on uh, the commercial software agile projects as well which are available how it will happen you will have to collaborate and then you do a test run and once the test run is accurate obviously then only you can shift to a 
sandbox or a production kind of an environment where you can pull in for a certain sprint and test it out for some time and then bring it uh, full fledged. But last, what I would say is that, um, believe it or not, AI definitely has made our life very easy, but it's not a substitute to human aspect. Obviously, we have to still collaborate, do the interactions, individuals are there the, uh, through which the collaboration has to still happen. And that becomes a key element of any project success. So that is why we always say we have we don't have to just use artificial intelligence in our agile project, but we have to combine the human and artificial intelligence in order to make our projects much more success than what we are doing today. Okay, with that, I would finish this. Um, if you have any questions, let's give it a uh, give it few minutes, few last minutes to address your questions. Yeah, no, there is one. How do you measure success of agile project like you you have shown in the presentation? Yes. So uh, measuring the success, uh, I will not go into uh, Dhananjay. I will not get into the agile project matrices. Obviously, I'm sure you guys are um, uh, are already aware of it. Uh, that what kind of matrices are being measured in agile projects and um, uh, and things like that. But uh, what I would say is uh, what I would say really tell you is. The three th uh, reporting tools that I was talking about, which is again deep learning analytics based descriptive analytics, wherein you are getting the descriptive reports, which is not only giving you the you, today you might be doing the burn down charts or velocity charts that I was talking about. All those were the matrices uh, uh, through which you were measuring the matrices, right? But tomorrow, if you are using a, a using a AI AI based tool. That would actually help you discover the pattern, right? Or identify even the anomalies that has happened or give you the recommended path as well in order to fix the given situation, right? So those kind of those kind of uh, descriptive analytics or the metrics measurement is still available as a part of certain tools. Not only that, then effort estimation, risk prediction, the matrices related to it, scorecards that are being developed, they are all uh, the kind of the visualization in comparison to the past projects when it comes to the risk probability matrices. All those kind of stuff are still prepared by the tools which are NLP based. So these are something that are at our avail with the AI based tools, which however are not available today. So these are kind of the matrices you might be uh, uh, might want to check out. So Josna is asking, uh, I'm looking for internship. What should be the track of success in the field of artificial intelligence? Josna, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sure about your background or your qualification, what exactly you would have done in past. But if you have some mathematical background, either from an IT or a non-IT background, you belong to then in that case, moving to an artificial intelligence is not, a, uh, I mean, in that domain is not a problem. Let me tell you the reason of success of this are a dual. One is definitely the reason being that uh, the word is going into the more cognitive and predictive, um, uh, predictive kind of, uh, uh, you know, predictive kind of features in any kind of app or in any kind of uh, any kind of tools that you might be using. The reason being uh, uh, the reason being that you we have seen that in past three years that there, uh, there is a lack of predictive analytics in our world because of which we have gone through that difficult time of the pandemic. Right. So if what if we would have forecasted any kind of such uh, such pandemic happening or hitting us? What if we are able to estimate the social distancing between the people or if whether they are uh, whether they were wearing masks or they were communicating how well they were communicating or not? That is one reason. The second reason being. Artificial intelligence and machine learning is agnostic to any industry. If you pick up on the internship for this field, then you can move to any particular industry. Why? Because it is applicable for any industry. That is a very good reason to be a here. If you have certain mathematical or, or, or you're saying you're a bachelor of technology, then very well and good. You obviously have got a mathematical background. You have some statistical information. Even if you don't have, I've seen people have picked up. It is if if you have got a data analytics background or uh, or uh, or or working with uh, databases in past, then it is all the more good as well to move into artificial intelligence and machine learning. Definitely yes. Today we are talking about um, applicability in uh, agile project management, but obviously there are a number of areas, be it be medical or education domain or even um, as um, um, why to go far as good as the, the car, car that I might be driving XUV 700. Uh, using the gyrome gyrometers, using the cameras, front cameras, rear cameras, making the prediction about car parking or uh, or the proximity to the next car, you know. 
So all that in the automobile world, they have actually grown like anything. MG Motors has come up with Gloucester, right? That is also based on this um, uh, this dashboarding or um, or um, or you know automated assisted EDA system and all. So these are these are some of the fields. Medical field has grown largely. Financial field. Financial domain has grown very, very high. Why? Because of the fraud analytics, that is a part of it, which is one major issue in this industry, which try, which people are trying to curb, whether it is a loan or finance or insurance kind of a stuff. So yes, there is a lot of applicability. You should pick up on the internship related to this. This is a upcoming field for sure. Okay, guys, we are on the top of the hour. Any other questions, guys, you have, feel free to put that in uh, or we'll call it a, call it a day. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Ruid, the session was wonderful. Great insight. Very informative. No problem, Rupali. My pleasure. Yeah. I hope people have picked up something from here and they would apply it day to day life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. And uh, no, uh, from uh, BMI Mumbai chapter, I would like to share a token of appreciation, a certificate. Thank you, certificate for you. So thank you for accepting the invite and finding time and giving us you no know, this detailed, insightful information about this topic, technical agility. <laughs> thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a nice evening. Bye. Yeah, team, I'll share the PDU code for one minute. Yeah, this is the PDU code and you can avail one, uh, uh, this thing, uh, one uh, PDU in technical category. And thank you everyone for joining the session. <laughs>